What are HFCTs? HFCT stands for High Frequency Current Transformer and it's a sensor for partial discharge detection or even measurement. So why do I have something like that? Well, imagine the following thing. Imagine I have a cable here and this is a high voltage cable and it's really, really long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my high voltage capacitor here, right? My coupling capacitor. I'm going to have a low voltage capacitor. This would be my quadrupole. I usually have a voltage source here probably AC, and I'm going to connect the whole thing to my cable. This would be my ground. And now I'm energizing the cable and I'm going to measure and the red that I'm getting to here goes to a measuring instrument. So this is pretty awesome. All is fine. The problem is if the cable is very, very long and I'm detecting partial discharges inside the cable, it is kind of hard to figure out where they are coming from. Yes, there is TDR, but uh, TDR has its limits as well. But furthermore, the biggest problem is if the TDR is not very clear and or the cable is so long that I have no means of seeing the, the echo, the reflection from the far end. And if I do, sometimes it's hidden in the noise. So imagine the following thing. You're trying to find partial discharges in a joint. Let's say the cable is, I don't know, 20 kilometers long. I have done that, testing on 20 kilometer long cables, uh, high voltage cables, 400 kV. And in this 20 kilometer cable, we had, I don't know, something like 26 joints or something like that. And you are trying to measure partial discharges, which are really, really small in the area of 10, 5, uh, five 10 picocoulombs. Sometimes you would be even happy to see 20 or 30 picocoulombs. However, your background noise is kind of high. And now you have a problem to figure out are there partial discharge or not. And very often you cannot rely on the fact and or be sure that if a partial discharge happens here, that you really are able to see it. Or even if a partial discharge happens here, yes, about 50% of the charge will travel in this direction, more or less. And about 50% of the charge will travel in this direction. Now you realize, oh, I have a partial discharge. We remember we have our TDR, Right? So we're getting our first signal. And now we just say, okay, let's wait. So now this one travels over here and then comes back. If the cable is very, very long, the attenuation is quite, quite hard. And now it takes multiple microseconds for the signal to actually come back. In the meantime, I have seen so many other partial discharges and or noise that I cannot be 100% clear to localize, to localize uh, the origin of the partial discharge. So, fortunately, for most of the joints, we have a possibility to access them. So, in a joint, usually you connect these two conductors, right? And then you have to connect the ground somehow. And sometimes, or depending on how it's done, the ground, there's a special cable for that, that connects the ground because inside the joint actually only the conductor is connected and de depending on the joint, right? And sometimes you can access the ground. Furthermore, on high voltage cables, sometimes you have cross bonding. Cross bonding means I'm taking the ground from phase one and connect it to my phase two. And I'm using the ground from phase two over here and connect it to my to three. So this means I actually have a cable here and I will have a cable here and then um, so if I have these cross bonding things right where the ground before the joint is connected to the next one and obviously one goes from then we would have one which goes from here all the way to here obviously it looks a little bit better I have an access point at least to the shield. I do, I'm not able to connect to the conductor, but at least to the shield. And if I have partial discharges, these partial discharges, they propagate through the cable. And guess what? They propagate between the conductor and the shield. This is awesome. So they are there. Um, I could measure them. So how do I do that? Well, obviously, very often the client doesn't really like me to take things apart. And the most HFCTs I know, they, they 
look a little bit like this. They could be round, they could be square. I'm going to use a square one now because it's easier to draw. They look a little bit like this. And then you have one here. And usually you have a connection wire here so you can connect something. And then you have to, these two pieces. You clap them around. You, and then it's closed, right? Then you, obviously then the HFCT, so it's, a, it's like this. You don't have a air gap in between. Sometimes you do, but that's another story. And this is where my wire goes through. And that's exactly that wire or that wire. Or we said it before, sometimes you have certain one where you can actually put the HFCT around here, or you put the HFCT around here. And now you connect this one to a measuring instrument. And if you see something, there is something, most likely. So you are able to measure on a very long cable, 20 kilometers, you can measure more or less localized. And now you can play around a little bit with the frequency in order to figure out uh, how far can I see. So I give an example. If you're measuring the low frequency and you're having one of these HFCTs here, it is not uncommon that you can like measure one kilometer or two kilometers on this side and two kilometers on this side, meaning you see multiple joints. However, and, and you can figure this out, right? It's pretty easy. You can literally have an HFCT here and then let's say I put an HFCT here. Once again, the ground is here. So I put my HFCT here. And I can literally connect a calibrator to it, inject a signal, and if I can see this very calibrator signal over here, like the second joint over, I know that I at least there is, and it's a sensitivity check, right? At least I know I can measure something. And I could even figure out how big the attenuation is. Is it a real measurement according to the IEC 60 to 70? Well, we could discuss that. Is it a real calibration, yes or no? Let's, let's oversimplify it and say no. It's a detection method. It helps us to figure out if there's partial discharge, where the partial discharge is. So that's pretty much it. HFCTs are awesome. You can use them. They take the high frequency content that goes through there. They decouple it. They put it into your measurement device and you can have an idea on um, where something is going on. And then if you play around with the frequency, you can even uh, skim it down to the place. So if you have a low frequency, maybe you can see multiple ones. If you have a high frequency, maybe you, maybe the only area where you catch something is like one joint over here, one joint over here, and this one, and then you can have an idea where the partial discharge is coming from. This being said, you could do this on medium voltage cables as well, right? You could this on other places as well. You could do this if you do an online measurement, right? Because if you do an online measurement, very, I mean, the idea of online measurement is that you do not take the cable offline. And there are people in this world, they told me, you know what, it is easier for me to hire a killer for my mother-in-law um, than to actually take one of these very important uh, high voltage cables offline. And the question is, which one is more enjoyable? But let's not get into something like that here. So sometimes it's possible to do an online measurement on a cable which is operating with nominal voltage, do a measurement and if you find something then definitely you have reasons to take the cable offline and do a proper off offline cable measurement system because we remember there has something to do with partial discharge inception voltage and extinction voltage. We got a video for that and this needs to be considered in order to know if my, product, if my, if my high voltage asset is healthy or not. I have used HFCTs not only on cables, but I've also used them on switch gears and I have used them on transformers because a transformer, a big, a big transformer, a distributing transformers, they usually have two, three, sometimes four grounding wires that ground the, the transformer and, 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 and make sure they have a proper ground. They're rather big. And now, well, if you have four and if everything is fine, you could imagine that 25% of the discharges go through each wire. If you detach one or you see one of them is already corroded, then you can think, oh, maybe this one isn't so well connected. Maybe I'm going to connect one uh, which looks better. So maybe you have an information as well. So partial discharge 
detection or measurement or localization. It's not always textbook like, sometimes you just have to be creative and figure out and what you do and where you get your signal from. And HFCTs is something I really like using, especially on cables, especially in long cables, if you cannot connect to the conductor. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and see you soon.